Howdy folks, Mr. Reed here and welcome to One More Question. So for today, we're going to be taking a look at the greatest common factor of two numbers. And I'm going to keep the numbers pretty small just so that we can get a good mild example going on. And so if greatest common factor is what you're looking for, let's get to it. All right, so the two numbers that we're going to take a look at are the numbers 40 and 30. And we're going to take the greatest common factor between those two. Now, before I get into that, I'm going to show you something, um, and I'm going to use 30 as the example. How to get all the factors of 30 if you've already done the prime factorization of 30. And this is something you may already know, or you might not know. And if you don't, that's what's going to be important. So 30. Uh, I'm going to do it the way that I normally set it up from a graphical point of view. If you like to do the tree instead, that's totally fine. Uh, so I know 2 goes into 30, leaves me with 15. 3 goes into 15, leaves me with 5. 5 is prime, uh, so my prime factorization of 30 is 2, 3, 5. Now, if I want to make all of the factors of 30, um, other than 1 in itself, because I, I didn't consider 1 there. So I, I guess I could, if I wanted to make a list, I could say 1 in itself are, are going to be factors. But I can also make up all of the other factors by mixing the prime factors that I have. I have 1, 2, 1, 3, and 1, 5. So what we can do is say, oh, if I just took one of the 2's, that would be a factor. If I took the 1, 3, that would be a factor. If I took the 1, 5, that would be a factor. Now, what if I took a 2 and a 3? So I could take both of those prime numbers. That would give me a 6. Now, the funny thing is, um, the way that I've set things up here, uh, I've already kind of got it in two columns as one goes with 30. The six that I just made actually goes with the five because five times six is 30. Now, if I didn't have any setup to it, that would still be okay. I could just make my list um, without knowing what it paired with and that would work too. So I could take one, two, and one, three. But I could take the two and put it with the five instead. So I could still take those two prime factors. And the reason that works is because all of those are factors of 30. So if I take two of them and mix them together, the two and the five are actually 10. And 10 is also going to be a factor because two and five are a factor. So if you were thinking of the uh, tree method, two and five at the end, if they had been grouped together, then it would have been a 10 that came from uh, the step before, the step previous. So that 10 with the two and the five um, would be paired up with the three there. And I could also have taken the three and the five and that would have paired up to give me 15 when I multiply those out and it goes with the two that I already have. So I can make every single one of the factors of 30 by taking different mixtures of my prime numbers. So if I take them all, of course, I get 30 and then I am left with the one that pairs up with it that was kind of left out. Uh, so one will never come out of this, but every other factor will. So I have my two, my three, my five. I have my mixes, which are going to be six, 10, and 15. And if you want to, you can include the 30 as well. This will always work. You will never miss a factor by taking all of the different mixtures of your prime numbers. We're going to take advantage of that to be able to find the greatest possible or the greatest common factor between two numbers. So we've already done all the work that we need to for 30. So let's go ahead and do it for 40 as well. So for 40, set that up and I'm going to say, okay, well, it's uh, even as well. So two goes in 20 times two would do that. Uh, two goes in again, I'm left with 10, two goes in again, I'm left with five, five is prime. So my list of my prime numbers that will go in are two, 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 five. Now I'm going to draw this out a little bit. I'm going to do the mixing thing again. So if I start doing that mixing, uh, of course, one goes in and that pairs up with 40. Uh, but again, that's not really helpful for this greatest common factor idea. Um, well, it, it actually can be um, because you could have the case where the entire number actually does go into the other one. So I probably should keep track of that. But that comes from the full mixture. So if I did two times two times two times five, I would get my 40 and one is what goes with that. All right, so next up, if I take just a two by itself, I take one of the prime numbers uh, that I had in my list, which is just a single two, uh, then that would go with 20. And I can cheat my way into that, or I could come up with it later. So I know that two times 20 gives me my 40, so I'll say that that's my pair. Uh, I could do two times two, which would give me four, 
or I could do two times two times two, which would give me eight, or two times no more twos, and this is the five, that would give me 10. And I could do two times two times five, uh, which would give me 20, because that's four times five is 20. And then I could do my two times two times two times five, which is my 40, which I already have. Now, I actually already had my 22. I didn't realize that when I wrote it down. So I don't need this 20 down here because I already have it in my list. It's paired up with the, um, with the two that's already there. So my uh, 10 um, is going to go with four, which I already have going on there too. And my eight is going to go with the one that I actually missed when I was going through it. I forgot that I could put my five by itself too. So I would have a five there as well. Now, you might think, oh, well, that was kind of chaotic and he was crossing things out as he went. I agree. I wouldn't normally write out all the different factors. This is not the way that I would do it. I am going to show you, though, uh, how I would do it in just a moment. What I'm going to do first, though, is finish this off and say, oh, what's the greatest number between these two lists that's shared? Well, 40 is not shared. 30 is not shared. 20 is not shared. 15 is not shared. 10 is shared. So my answer to this is going to be 10. Now, I can do this a little bit cleaner because what I can say is that that 10 is made up of what prime numbers? A two and a five. So when I look at my lists, uh, my prime factorizations that I started with, I can say, oh, they both have a two. They don't both have any more twos. So I have one two that is in common. I don't have a three in both lists, so no threes are in common. I do have a five in both lists. Those fives are in common. So the biggest possible number that I can make with things that both lists have, they can both have, they both have the building blocks in order to make these numbers, is a two in both the lists and a five in both the lists. What's two times five? 10, that's my greatest common factor. That's gonna work every time. If you can come up with a list of the prime factorization uh, of the values that you're working with for a greatest common factor, pick out the prime factors that are in common uh, doubling up is okay. So this example didn't have any, but if both lists had two twos, we would take both twos um, and it would be two times two times anything else that was also in common. So that's a good setup uh, for giving us a method to deal with this greatest common factor. Uh, so if you'd like to kind of continue on and see how this could be applied in a little bit larger, both number and um, I guess number of different values that I'm going to be looking for the common factor of. In my medium video, I'm just going to record next. I'm going to have three different numbers, uh, all of which are going to be three digits. And so we'll be able to see this concept kind of fleshed out a bit. And it works generally for any number with any size value, but you'd never want to do it if they got too big. The prime factorization would be too nasty. Um, so that's a little introduction. Hopefully you found that helpful. There goes my pen top or my Apple Pencil top. I'm not re-recording it for that. So we'll give it, <laughs> we'll let it go from there. And uh, if you found that helpful, like, subscribe, and take care, folks.